Hey everybody, hope you're doing well on this Wednesday morning. So uh, my question today for you all is, do you have enough influence to get done what you wanna get done? Um, I think that sometimes the idea of influence or persuasion can get people a little nervous. Like they, they hear influence and they think uh, manipulation, they hear influence and, and they think of something nefarious. But essentially, influence is, it doesn't have to be nefarious. It's really how you choose to implement it. So my real question is, like, can you get done what you need to get done at work and home? And if not, the problem might be that you actually just don't have enough influence with the people that matter in that situation. So um, the, the idea of influence, we, we talked a little bit about it on yesterday's episode. And then today, um, I am working with quite a few clients that are really trying to improve their own influence skills. And it's a huge part of the Plus Pay Lifestyles um, transformation program. However, this particular conversation actually came up from a conversation I was having this morning with my husband. And so um, one of the things that we were talking about is in one of my roles as a project manager, um, how to get things done. And it's 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 odd sometimes, right? Because we usually think that getting things done as project people are always, often very left brain. It's like getting the first task and the second task and the third task and the fourth task done. But if you're working like a matrix organization or you don't have direct responsibility for the people on your team, very often what happens is you don't have the influence you need to get things done. So projects get delayed, timelines get delayed, and then it looks as if maybe you aren't being able to do the job that you were asked to do. Uh, by the way, before I forget, my name is Jackie Schwab. I am the founder of the Press Play Lifestyle Signature System for creating a life by design, not by default, uh, and also a professional success coach. So, so if influence is so important, right, as we just talked about, then like what are some strategies that we can all employ to begin to increase our influence skills, right? So um, I, I, there's a long list of different ways to improve your influence. And we talked about some different things of nonverbal yesterday, but today will be a few things that you consider doing tactically. So like the first one or the one we're gonna talk about today is having influential friends. Now, here's the thing, I get that you may not automatically know the state governor or, um, you may not know a may, the mayor, or you may not know uh, people who you think are influential, but I would consider rethinking what influential means to you, right? What do you need to get done? And then who do you need to know to get that done? So an example that I would give is if you're, let's say you're a parent and um, there's been lots of fundraising over the last few years for the technology um committee at school, but all that technology money keeps getting um, used to, I don't know, maintain the old television VCR setups they have. And you're like, what the heck, you know, this is 2020, I want my kids to have a tablet, or I want them to have the school to have use of tablets or to our iPads. So does it do you any good to have influence over that? Um, the president of the United States, if what you need is to get the changes in the technology committee, no, right? The the thing that you want to do is start to pursue a relationships with people maybe on the PTA, people at the head of the fundraising. So when we talk about building influential friendships or influential relationships, what we're really talking about is seeking out people who have um, influence over an outcome that you desire and then working to create a genuine relationship with them because when they know, like, and trust you, they're more often likely to consider your input and therefore increase your influence. And the next one is very similar in terms of um, the people side of influence, but it's to increase your network or in, in individuals that you know. Now, this one can be um, dicey and also, you know, head into some of those like nefarious places as well. But the intent with networking isn't to go out and see how many people you can add to your friends list or how many people do you know on LinkedIn or any of that. What it really is about is how many 
maintained relationships do you have in areas that you have interest? So um, one thing that I do tell a lot of my clients, especially those who tend to be a bit introverted, is put half an hour on your schedule once a week and then go send an email to say hi to an old colleague, right? Or go to LinkedIn and get on your messaging and send a message out. Or if you feel, if you see a great article that's specific to your field, then share that article with someone uh, that's in your network. But it's very easy to lose track of networking if you don't actually have some sort of minor process for keeping in touch, especially if, if you're a bit more on the shy side or quieter side. Um, it can be a little harder for you to uh, express yourself through networking. So putting it on your calendar can be really helpful. And then like the third option or third idea that I wanted to touch on today was the idea of increasing the skill of having influence. Now that may seem silly, but we're literally doing that right now, right? If you want to have more influence skills or persuasion skills, then learn some techniques. There's a great book out there called Impossible to Ignore, and it's a whole bunch of small techniques on how to increase your influence. There's yesterday's um, episode of P3 TV where we talked about other ways to be seen, right, or to be memorable. All of those things are opportunities for you to work on and learn that skill and, and practice it, right? Because we get better at the things that we practice and track. We don't get better at things that we ignore. Um, so that's, that's the third way that you can increase your influence. And then the fourth, which is one of my favorites, probably because I used the word nefarious early on, is being a person of high integrity. If you do what you say you're going to do, and if you tell the truth and you interact with people on an authentic level and treat them with respect, that usually is reciprocated, right? People mirror that back to you. So if you do what you say you will do, in general, that level of higher integrity is going to automatically um, increase your influence with with the circle of people that you spend time with that know that you have higher integrity. Um, I would encourage this to be a value anyway, even if you aren't necessarily working on your um, influence skills, but it's definitely one that can be be very helpful. Um, and then the the last one for today is improving your leadership skills. Um, a lot of people will say, you know, I walked into a room and I knew that person was a leader. Well, you probably did that because they stood a certain way. They had a certain posture. They are charismatic. You know, they um, started leading the conversation. They looked at you. They mirrored your body language, like all those things we talked about um, on prior episodes. But the good news is, is leadership, while in some people is an innate skill set, it's also a skill set that you can learn. So you can um, go to a leadership conferences, you can read books about leadership. Um, I'm a big fan of um, The Compound Effect, which is a book by um, Darren Hardy. There's Watership Down, Watership Down. There's a whole bunch of great leadership books out there. Um, good to Great by Jim Collins. Uh, that really can help you uh, find one of those many traits and skills of a good leader and to work on that skill. One of the um, key tenets of a growth mindset for a leader is one is be willing to work hard, two is be learn winning, willing to learn a new skill set, and three is to take feedback from others about areas in which you can improve. So if you want to be a good leader and you want to increase your influence, then two ways to do that are to let your immediate peer contacts know that you're doing that and request feedback. And, and of course, engage yourself with a leadership coach who can help you um, assess where you might have some blind spots, uh, even assess where you might have some hidden strengths and help you leverage them. So leadership skills are a component of influence. Uh, again, depending on what you're trying to have influence on, right? If you're trying to influence the PTA to buy some tablets, um, you probably don't need to go take a course on, on leadership. You may just uh, need to be involved and need to have high integrity and and make a plan to like in, increase the network to include the people on those committees. But uh, leadership skills are definitely a way to have a growth mindset and pursue uh, in, increasing your influence. 
Now, just a note on this, and I think we've said this many times before, but not all these tips are going to work for everyone. Um, if you're paralyzingly introverted, um, maybe going out and meeting a high influence friend isn't going to be something you're stepping out of the gate with right away. But you can be a very high integrity person, and then that in and of itself will assist you. So you know, take what you need and leave the rest. But um, some of these skills, some of these tactics are helpful for you when you're trying to increase your influential network. Uh, or share this for others who are trying to increase their influence or they're trying to get some things done that they've maybe had hit a roadblock with. Join our Facebook group. It's called Success with Balance for Entrepreneurs. And there are a whole lot of other um, people in that group that are also reaching for success and also trying to increase their influence. So who knows, maybe you'll meet someone in the group that is going to be part of your new influence network. So this is Jackie Schwab reminding you to embrace your pause, play the game that you want to win, and prosper with a lifestyle by design and not by default. All right, kids, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye.